Hi, I'm Joseph McDaniel, and I'm a bankruptcy lawyer. Under the current version of the bankruptcy code, after 2005, something that bankruptcy lawyers among ourselves refer to as the BARF Act, uh, I'm required to tell you as well that I am not a human being, I am a debt relief agency. Therefore, I am both an Arizona bankruptcy attorney and a debt relief agency. Now that that's out of the way, let's get to the issue of the options as opposed to bankruptcy. About 10 times a week, somebody will write into me or uh, drop into my office and say, so what are my options? As a general rule, by the time somebody has dropped into my office or thought to email a bankruptcy attorney, there are no good options. There are always options. One option is to try to pay the debt off over time. On the other hand, once the credit card companies have kicked the debt from 2% interest to 38% interest, mm, that option is sometimes foreclosed as a practical matter. Another option, <clears throat> excuse me, another option is to try to negotiate the debts down. It's entirely possible. It's absolutely capable of being done. Most people don't have the stomach for that process. It'll take as long as a year or perhaps longer. And the 80-20 rule does apply. 80% of the credit card creditors will, at the end of a period of time, eventually reach the conclusion, if you provide them with accurate and honest information, they'll reach the conclusion that you're a dry well, which you undoubtedly are. And after they reach that conclusion, suddenly they want to negotiate and do deals. 20% of credit card companies, and it's a different 20% in any given matter, 20% of credit card companies don't want to do a deal, and they instead want to sue you. Why? Well, because it's their internal policy. I hope they make a lot of money doing it. I don't think it's a good idea for them or anybody else, but there you go. Nonetheless, getting deals done is an option. But normally, when folks come in and say, so, what are my economic options? It sounds to me almost as though I'm asking somebody, so when I go into professional sports, uh, what do you think my best option is? You think I should play professional ball, maybe professional basketball, or is boxing a better alternative? If somebody has $100,000 worth of income a year and two or three kids, and they're still married, and they have five million bucks worth of debt, which is Surprisingly, not as uncommon as you'd think. There are pretty limited options. Oddly enough, uh, if that poor devil has primarily business debt, the one thing he doesn't have to worry about is the dreaded means test. But that's a topic for a different day. Thank you very much.